Here's some nice leaf rust. So what are we looking for? Looking for red pustules, lots of little red dots on the leaves of the wheat plant. Sometimes at the beginning of the season, the red dots are mostly down on the lower leaves, like this. This is leaf rust pustules. Look at all this leaf rust. This field is just thick with it. it gives the leaf a bright red color. And when that disease really takes off, then the leaf is going to become increasingly covered with the little red dots, and there'll start to be some brown, brown areas, like you see on this leaf next to my fingers. The leaf is starting to turn brown because the leaf rust is literally killing off that part of the leaf. Here's a leaf. Oh my. That's still got some green color, and those little red spots are the leaf rust. These, these brownish areas are caused by the rust just killing off that section of the leaf. This leaf hasn't gotten to that brown stage yet for the most part. It's still green, but the rust is feeding heavily on it and it's going to turn it brown before too long. So is, is this at a level that, that would be damaging? Yes. So this is way past when a spray should have been applied. That's right. Okay. Earlier Ooh. in the season, you're going to see a leaf that looks like this. It, it'll have a mostly green color, but there'll be some reddish dots that are starting on it. And if you see those at a frequency of, say, 1 to 3 percent of the leaf area being covered with those little red dots, and the weather is warm and windy, it's a good bet that leaf rust is going to blow up and it might pay to spray. Leaf rust uh, needs to be controlled on the flag leaf and the leaf below the flag. And uh, so it's important to spray when uh, rust levels reach an average of about 3% uh, of coverage of those leaves. Um, and starting at flowering, the upper two leaves and the heads themselves contribute most of the nutrients to fill that grain head with grain. And so the goal is to keep the flag leaf and the leaf below the flag leaf uh, free of disease so that they can photosynthesize. Um, if you've got those leaves covered with rust pustules, then that area is not available for photosynthesis. Um, the rust fungus is also sapping the nutrients that the plant would otherwise be putting into the grain. So in two ways, the rust is hurting the plant. Uh, you can lose uh, a large percentage of your um, grain weight, grain density, from uh, a really heavy rust infection. Your grain will just be smaller, it'll weigh less, it'll be less dense. You want to scout your crop for diseases, including leaf rust, uh, during uh, boot stage and heading, and up through flowering. Those are the times when you can apply a fungicide. The Triazole and the strobilurin fungicides are all effective against leaf rust, either very good or excellent in their efficacy. Uh, the thing is that most fungicides go off-label. That means it's no longer legal to apply them around heading. Some of them are available as late as milk stage or up until 30 days prior to harvest. Uh, so uh, since leaf rust is a disease that can come in late in North Carolina, it's important to be aware that if you see it, you may need to control it right away in order to stay within the pre-harvest restriction period. If you know that your variety has moderate resistance to leaf rust, then the fungicide application may not pay because the variety may control the disease on its own, even if it has a few pustules like this. But if you have a moderately susceptible or susceptible variety, then probably spraying will pay. The conditions that give rise to bad leaf rust epidemics include heavy dews, moderate temperatures, windy conditions, um, a lot of spores blowing around in the state. Wheat plants that are this severely affected with leaf rust will have lower yields and lower test weights. Uh, it's hard to say exactly how much lower, but with an epidemic this bad, possibly 20 to 30 percent. So this, this is a 
wheat line where it would have paid to spray a fungicide. The North Carolina State University Small Grains Production website has all the information you need about sprays, uh, pre-harvest intervals, thresholds, and application rates. This program is funded by the North Carolina Small Grain Growers Association.